Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to We Win with T Win. I have a very special show going for us today, featuring a gentleman friend of mine that I met while traveling. His name is Tolly Shapiro. Tolly, can you hear me? I can, Justin. Hello. Hello. Very exciting. Tolly and I got into some amazingly intellectual discussions. And so I'm just going to briefly introduce what we're going to talk about today, some of the topics, and then Tolly and I are just going to have at it and discuss at length. And for those of you who are listening, you're going to get to hear sort of two sides of of the issue. So the issue of today, if I remember Tolly, is uh, social media and developing intimacy, utilizing social media, whether that is even possible or if it is how. Am I sort of right in, in that? You're right in the ballpark there, Justin. <laughs> I feel like we're a radio show. That's why I picked this. I don't know if you can hear it, Tolly, but I picked this. The... I really like. I really like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I felt like uh, I I actually picked as our opening song, "Video Killed the Radio Star." Yeah, sure. The the rise of MTV, the death of uh, the death of radio. Right, and now that the internet is up, the internet has killed the video star. Yes. Well, and then, of course, social media has killed both of them. Right. Well, I know. I, maybe they just coexist. Or has it? Well, yeah. Ooh, oh, <laughs> controversy already on the podcast. Already there. Already. 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 We're already there. Okay, so we're the format of the show, we're aiming for about an hour. We're going to take a small break, uh, about 30 minutes in. I've got my little clock running. And I've pulled up our notes from before. There we are. So now I feel I feel like we're ready to go on this topic. And I guess I'll take the liberty. Wow, that computer is loud. Mute. And um, <laughs> I'm going to take the liberty of starting our show. I'm going to I'm going to start it, and then we'll just kind of keep going from there as we do. Right, Tolly? Okay. I uh, oh, captain, my captain. I'm uh, li- listening yeah. to you. Actually, you know, I realized before we go into this, we should probably do a small introduction. I mean, most of the viewers by this point hopefully know who I am. My name is Justin Tewin. I don't think I introduced myself today, but that's me. Uh, and I'm a motivational speaker and life coach. Tolly, maybe you can give us a little bit about yourself. I know a little bit about you, but I think it's better if it comes from you. Okay, well, well, uh, like you mentioned earlier, the way that we met was uh, overseas. We were both traveling and uh justin you you sort of came came into the sphere of my my group of friends that I was traveling with and and we had this great conversation and uh you you spoke about being a uh, motivational coach and motivational speaker and um and I mentioned to you that uh, that I don't really like motivational speakers and motivational coaches, and and that I think it's a little bit of uh, of you know pop psychology mixed in with um, mixed in with it's some sort of like inspirational sounding language, and it's not you know it doesn't really have a lot of substance. So uh, you thought that was hilarious that you know you and I had uh, had this great conversation together, and then I was dropping a bit of. I'm giggling over on my end right now. I'm still giggling thinking about I, it. Yeah, it's and, and it, you know it's a testament to you as you know as the positive person that you are. Um, but yeah, so I'm you know I'm a bit of a glass half empty rather than glass half full sort of person. I think that's probably the. Uh, the most simplistic way of uh, of uh, you know delineating what's the difference between you and I. Um, mm-hmm. Also, a uh, I, I don't probably don't want to define myself as such, but for work, I'm a lawyer, um, and mm-hmm. I, I work a lot on uh, on writing a policy. And um, in life, I uh, I don't really like doing much. I'm probably uh, more of a homebody and bit introverted i guess uh, i don't know mm-hmm. if there's anything else interesting about I, th- I think that's good i think we've neglected only one thing and i think i forget- neglected to mention that you're australian and you oh, yeah, yeah well if you can't tell by the uh 
the uh, irritating accent, then yes, yeah, that's I. I, I, I actually it. find it very pleasant. I don't find your accent irritating. It's almost I. I, I know it may, I'm, what I'm about to say is a bit faux pas, but you have a a hint of a British accent mixed with something else. That that is a faux pas, actually, Justin. Uh, mm-hmm. But no, I, I, I knew I, it was. I knew I was going into dangerous ground. I, I don't know if it is. Um, I, I I don't think I sound very British. I think it's just because I enunciate my words, you know, for fear of not being understood. Um, mm. I, I don't think it's the your your enunciation that's going to cause people to not understand you. Sure. Okay. Well, I I really enjoy your accent. Uh, I free, I live with a with a, an American gentleman at the moment, um, and whenever I meet a, a North American, I um I I really do enjoy the way that you guys pronounce things, especially food. Um, I I find <laughs> it I find it damn near erotic. So. Um, <laughs> it's it's a little it's a weird it's I okay like what like give me a word I'll say it give me a word it's on the that precipice you think of is a funny. fetish but it's not exactly a fe- uh well my prime example would be like describing describing a subway sandwich and and just um. Just, just say the whole thing. Like, like in in Australia, we just we shorten things. We're just like, oh, I'll have like a I'll have a sub, a six inch sub with like meatballs. Whereas you would be like a meatball six inch Subway sandwich. Like you'll you'll go <laughs> you'll go the whole thing. And uh, there's something there's something just so decadent and so mm. indulgent. In that for me, that yeah, it just it just does it for me. It gives me a little bit of a tickle in my pickle. <laughs> just viewer discretion advised in advance for uh, for this show oh, because true. you never know where this can go. Too late. Right? We never know. We have fallen down the rabbit hole. Yeah, we're in. We're in. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to get us on to today's topic, which is social media and developing intimacy using technology. Now, a little bit about my history with it. I learned how to socialize in like especially particularly like talking with the opposite gender uh i learned to do that using like icq if you do you remember what that is talia do you are you familiar with that program yeah so i i don't think we we had that but we or or i'm i'm not of your era perhaps but we we had Mm -hmm. um uh we had something similar i i never partook in that i didn't really like it Yeah, so like back, this was before even Facebook and and some of the more modern stuff. There was profiles. You could actually look at people geographically based on interests. There were chat rooms and people could do that. So I actually started using uh, social media myself initially to learn how to socialize at a time in which it was not cool. And how old were you, uh, Justin? I would have been 15, 16 at the time. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so on the one hand, I feel like I had a bit of an unhealthy... Uh, initially unhealthy use of it. Like I used it all the time as my way of communicating and and interacting, but eventually I moved away from it and I ended up in a a several year spell of almost never using it. When Facebook came out, I was like, Facebook, I don't want to use that. Like, why don't we just talk to people? And uh, even when I did sign on to Facebook, I found myself in that addiction phase, which I think a lot of our viewers can relate to. They end up addicted to keeping up to date with these superficial uh, levels of communication. Right, and so people use this technology in, uh, to supplement what it is that, like a, a real conversation. They use it to supplement what, what uh, a, a real life interaction. Uh, and so my my argument, my thesis for today is that social media can be used to increase communication and develop better relationships with people, whether that's business personal or interpersonal like relate uh, romantic relationships i think it can be used for those purposes however the caveat to that is it must be done in the right context it, it, i think social media is excellent if it is seen as a tool and not as an exclusive medium yeah and, and i think that um my my counter thesis although i feel like uh, that's you know an abuse of the word in this context um, mm-hmm. because I agree with you in in large. Um, I think that it it can be used as a as an accompaniment as a tool um, to uh, to communicate with people and to form uh, good quality long lasting relationships. But on the whole, um, that it has to be a 
uh, an accompaniment. It can't be the, the the main the main form of communication with people at at, at any point, um, because it it filters too much of what it really means to be a human being um, mm -hmm. out you know out of interactions. Now I do remember we in our pre preparatory conversation to this, you'd mentioned, and I think we should add it in as a as a component, whether we even feel that social media is necessary. I think in our initial conversation, you were advocating for the uh, uh, advocating its disuse, where well, I was saying it could be used. Well, I think I think it definitely um, can be used, but I think that. Uh, people need to be a little bit more selective about what they uh, remove in terms of social media from their lives. Um, for example, uh, there, there are a bunch of websites that, you know, really are just satisfying quite a superficial need um, for mm -hmm. affirmation. Um, I know that in our preparatory sessions, we spoke about uh, these two websites. Uh, one is called... Uh, rate my dick, and the other one is called rate my boobs. Um, mm, yeah, we did talk about that. I'm remembering now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just oh, just uh, throw your mind back, and if you mm. you obviously can't add a sound effect of uh, of like a uh, you know jingles and timpanies and that sort of thing. To I bet you I could. I think there is a soundboard I can add to the show. You know, I, I'm gonna. I have a to do list. My web. My my show designer, he's actually coming into town this weekend, so maybe I can like sit and he can show me how to how to add that because I could add sound effects to our show. Okay, I, I think that it would add an extra layer of uh, of depth and class that that I really think your show is missing. Um, Are you sure? Like, I mean, a sound like my, my, might not be like <laughs> yeah, like a to like a toilet flush if you, if you prove <laughs> if you prove your guest wrong on some point like. Like they've been flushed or something like that. You can have some catchphrases, yeah. you know, just really, yeah, yeah. Keep it really tasteful, affirming things. I think you know what I, I like that. That's a really great suggestion. I think that'll be be very helpful. So I think I, I think to some level I agree that sh um, w certain websites like Rate My Dick or Rate My Boobs are very like I I fail to see the positive that can come to someone's life. Like I'm not, I, I feel like I'm coming short, uh, no pun intended on w <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like I'm coming short on, on how those websites can create a positive environment. Uh, it, it creates a competitive almost structure where there's a winner and a loser. And even when you win, uh, what are you really winning? You know, well, if you rate really well, what does that even mean for you? You know, I, I, and, and to what, what level of intimacy would I develop as a person utilizing such a site? Well, let, let's talk about it. Let's, let's discuss um, exactly what the sites entail, um, just to give uh, the listeners, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a, a fuller picture. And um, I, I, are you happy to describe? Would you like me to describe it? I know that you're a more frequent, you know, visitor to these sites than oh, I Oh, uh, you know what? I, I really... I, I think I looked it up when we were doing our research, and then I promptly never looked it up again. So okay. I'll let you describe it. Uh, okay, I'll so, let you have the liberty. Okay, so basically, b both websites have uh, have a similar um, a similar structure, and it's basically that you you upload a picture of uh, whatever you know organ that you want uh, to be rated, uh, you know, mm -hmm. be it be it breasts or or, or penis. And mm -hmm. uh, then uh, people log on, and presumably they can have a username or something like that. And then they provide a rating out of ten uh, for your uh, for your uh, organ. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, you can look it up, and you can see your rating, and you can see what people have have said. Uh, I believe there's a comment area at the bottom of the the website as well. Um, so is that's there is there an option to chat? or develop connections with people for whom you appreciate their image that they've shown. Right. So I think that the, that really is in the comment section below that you can kind of leave a comment and then you can possibly reply as the poster of the picture, um, uh, you know, to that comment. But I, I, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't, um, 
take advantage See, so, of that option if I was a user of the website. Well, sure. And I mean, I, if I remember, people for the most part were anonymous. They they completely stripped all elements of a person and just showed the organ in question, if I'm correct, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, so, they, they had a witty name of some sort, like... Uh, yeah. I'm I'm not even going to try and think of one. I don't remember. No, no, it's it's, it's quite a but... pressure. It's too much pressure to say something funny. I <laughs> pressure. So I feel <laughs> I feel like this doesn't really classify as social media, though. There's not really an intense level of social interaction aside from the comments. You know, how is that any different than say Reddit, where people can log in and read a story and then leave comments about that story? Well, I think you're focusing too much on on language, uh, you know, being used as the main modality of of interaction mm-hmm. with other people. I mean, um, surely, surely you've been intimate with someone before, where um, you know there wasn't really much talking, um, and you know you just strip okay. off, you look at each other, and and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of body language a lot of touching and that sort of thing and it re- the communication there is is very intense but it's really not a bad language ah uh, i see what you're saying so it, it essentially you're saying that uh it's not something that would uh it, there is a level of, of of socializing if you will it's but it, it is rather superficial yeah, it's superficial, but you know, like say say you have a small penis, and um, I'm I'm sure part of this is hypothetical. Let's just say you have a small penis, and uh, you're feeling very insecure about having a small penis, and it's you know it's something that you just really really care about, and you take a picture of your small penis and you put it up on this website, and and a bunch of people contact you and say like hey i have a small penis fetish actually and oh that is that's a really great dick you got there just just super swell just just great like i do you feel though that like (laughs) i mean sorry to interrupt you there (laughs) you're using the words small penis i think as much as possible in your statement (laughs) (laughs) but i i just wonder um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to extrapolate a little bit because I think for me, it's gotten to the level of superficiality that lacks, uh, I, I can see why someone would want to feel a connection, but my argument would be perhaps they can find deeper connections in other ways uh, than, than to just focus on one, one aspect. Okay, but sometimes you just you, you need superficial validation. Like, you know, um, hey, Justin, okay. you have lovely curly hair. I wish I had lovely curly hair like you. And you should see how curly it is today. It really is curly. Is it really curly? It's exceptionally curly. Like You it, know how much I like your curly hair, Justin. It's very curly. But anyway, I mean, that aside, uh, I, I feel like I've taken away from your point. <laughs> uh, my, my point is, is that that makes you feel good, doesn't it? Yeah, it does actually. I did feel rather rather pleased at you telling me that you enjoyed my curly hair. And if somebody were to say that they didn't like your curly hair, that they th- thought that curly hair was, you know, for um for ugly people, how would that make you feel? I think it would make me feel much less happy. Right. So, based on that extremely scientific, very complex uh metaphor Analysis, example, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we, we, we can deduce that, that this Rate My Penis website might actually make you feel pretty good about yourself. Depending on what you receive as a rating and, and how you interact with people, sure. But uh, I'm going to extrapolate a little bit to a site that's similar, uh, or not a site, but an app. It's, uh, if you remember, I don't know if you ever observed the website Hot or Not. It was sort of the first users submitted... Uh, level platform where people submitted pictures of themselves and then would get rated yep. on how attractive they were. So similar, right? Uh, only you also had an option on the, on the website where you could meet people. Yes or no. Yep. And if both people said yes, then they could immediately begin chatting. This sounds a lot like my good friend Tinder. Yes. And that's what I'm referring to. Tinder uh, is similar. Now, I I remember when I first heard of Tinder, I had male friends of mine, we would be at a bar and they would literally be on their phone, you know, going, yes, 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 yes. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, well, I'll just say yes to everyone. And then that way, those who say yes to me, I'll just pick the best of those and talk to them. 
Okay, but I, I, I guess that's uh, that's shitty of them. Um, it is, but then there's a, the flip side where people take it seriously and they're actually like, yes, no, yes, no. And then they begin chatting with someone who's 10 feet away from them and now they know that they're interested in them. Well, I, I think that the issue with that is um, that, it, you know, and, and we touched on this in our preparatory talk, is that it's about moral safe, um, honest use of social media that's important. I think that you should aim to be as, as you know, engage with it on, uh, on as honest and, and, and good a basis as you can. Um, mm-hmm. And so if you're using an app like Tinder, I mean, the idea would be hopefully that you would engage with people on as, uh, you know, fair a, a footing as you possibly could, right? Yeah, but don't you think that uh, – let's give an example. Let's say we're at a bar and you see someone across the way, you know, and you're like, oh, they're very attractive. So you go up and you speak to them and then they say, well, I don't re- I'm not really interested in talking to you or I'm seeing someone or whatever, and then you, you leave. So you face that rejection and this, I think, is a, l- a very common reality that people don't want to face. So they have an app like Tinder that circumnavigates that process. And what I'm wondering is, does those, circumnavigating that process take away some of the social interaction of life? Is it is are we so fear fearful of rejection and what that would mean that we only will meet people who also, in advance, tell us yes, I like you too. Uh, well, I I, I mean I probably agree with you, but just to play devil's avocado. Uh, Devil's avocado is always a delicious meat meal. It really yeah, is. It, it, it is. It, and it's, it's healthy. It's full of great good oils. Good oils. And, and this month, you can put them on your subs at Subway. You can put <laughs> yeah, Devil's avocado. That's right. For just a dollar extra, you can put some Devil's avocado on your subs. Um, <laughs> so, just, do they do that in Australia right now? Do they have the avocado month? I believe that they have a free avocado month every once in a while, but generally it, it does it's cost extra. But but it costs so much. It costs so much more extra than an avocado. Like like uh, it, it costs the amount of avocado that they put is not proportional to the cost of avocados. In it's actually just driven me to go purchase avocados. I really want them, so I just buy avocados and and do it myself. I love avocados so much. They're just so. We could probably have a whole show about the glory of the avocado. We should. We should. We should do like a historical review of of (laughs) avocados. But okay, so I'm playing devil's avocado here. I probably I probably agree with you. I think that it does uh, reduce uh, you know the 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 possibility of rejection and fear of rejection and. Uh, you're you're interacting with people based on the knowledge that they probably are interested in you. Um, mm-hmm. I think uh, the the potential to be hurt, um, the potential to still feel rejection, is still very real in in those dating apps. I I think that it isn't far enough removed that that isn't part of the experience. I also wonder how safe sometimes it might be, you know, when, when you, when you have only a superficial knowledge of someone, I remember a friend of mine, uh, she had met someone through Tinder or one of those social media, maybe it was plenty of fish or maybe it was Facebook. I don't remember. She met them and, and had relations with them. And then they made off with like her cell phone. (laughs) <laughs> right that's that's terrible and, and like and she didn't know their real name that's yeah so, that's, that's awful right but there's a there's an interesting twist to this story using the very using facebook i believe she posted pictures of him because she had images from his profile yeah and said this guy just did this this and this if anyone knows his name let me know i'm trying to get my stuff back yeah and within within an hour he took his facebook profile down Within four hours, she had his name. And by the next day, he was fired from his job because they had found out. Wow. That's so a, isn't, isn't that's it interesting? Feel, like, that's a feel-good story there, Justin. That, that could just it, be it's a, got a positive end. That could be a fluff. That could be a, a nice fluff item at the end of the news. 
it, it's it, it amazes me because it it reveals the dangers of social media and how we need to take time to know people still. Just because someone said, "Yeah, I like you, and I want to, I want to see you," doesn't mean maybe that you should just instantly uh, make, make yourself vulnerable to that person. On the and flip also, side, and also the powers of social media to to seek uh, Greek myth esque revenge on uh, <laughs> right, it, it, like yeah. It, 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 I mean. It, it, it resulted in the police getting involved. And the funny thing is the police themselves um, said they were too busy and, and were not interested in pursuing the case. They said, well, we'll look into it. But she took it upon herself because it was fresh to just blast the Internet. And utilizing the Internet, she was able to to obtain her her. Well, if I understand the criminal justice system correctly, it's that the police like to encourage vigilantism. So... <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's that's a great result all around. Um, I, you know, that's so. I, I, I the, my favorite part of the story is that he got fired. Well, I that's just he, it. Like she ended up, she ended up finding out where he worked, and so she called there and just told them like what had happened. But notice that there's an integration between Facebook people um, taking an interest in the story, and then also a little bit of traditional methods you know phone calls and 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 that kind of thing it wasn't just one thing that ended up bringing resolution it wasn't the reliance on one one media does how how much does this like this is a this is an interesting question for you um Mm -hmm. how much this does all of this behavior reflect on on your friend herself like what what does what do you feel this says about her what how was this different or similar to how you thought of her in, in in normal life, you know, not confronted with this. You know, I was uh, I was really impressed because she normally was a reserved person. I think that's that may have been why she turned to uh, social media for meeting people in the first right. place. Right. Um, and when and when negative things came upon her in the past, she tended to just sort of grit her teeth and deal with it right. personally. Right. However, social media provided her with an outlet. You know, and and although you end up with things like bullying and some of the negative stuff that can, can occur, in this case, the outlet was a, was a positive one. It was seeking a positive result, resolution or or justice for uh, a crime that was committed. And I think she was empowered to utilize social media in that in that way. So I think that was a very clear and good example of how you can use social media to make your life better. I think it also at the, first part is a clear example of how social media can make your life worse. Right. Well, I mean, the experience all around had, you know, it obviously was a successful exercise. I just wonder how you would feel necessarily like, yes, yeah, somebody stole my phone and that's terrible, but then I got them fired from their job and I caused them all of these social problems. And is that proportional in terms of revenge to mm. to what they did to me? Like, did did it end up making her a, a, a worse person in a sense? Mm, that's a good question. I don't think her intention was to cause him to lose his job. I think the reason he lost his job was the nature of what he did for work. I think he was like a cashier or in a position of trust where yep. it, him just being affiliated with the idea of crime made his employer not want to trust him. Yeah. I think it brought a sense of satisfaction to the person. I mean, like you said, and I think the natural reaction is, well, this guy tried to get away with stealing something worth five or $600. He sort of got a, a very quick karma, if you will, that, that the, the traditional or not traditional, but the more common knowledge of what karma is sort of, he did something bad. It came back and bit him in the butt, you know? Right. Um, right. I don't think she went in with the design of, I'm going to ruin this guy's life. Right. Now, on that note, I've known a lot of people uh, refuse to use social media like Facebook and things like that because they're scared to lose their career. When I was a teacher, I was deathly scared to use Facebook, to post anything about my life for fear that a child would see it or, the, uh, you know, a child with whom I am, I am entrusted. Right, right. I, uh, or their parents or, you know, anything like that. I I disengage with uh, with a, a lot of social media. I obviously do uh, partake in some, um, mm-hmm. but uh, for example, I I don't have a Facebook. I've never had a Facebook. I never intend to have a Facebook. And 
um, you know, a, a good chunk of my reasons for not having it is because I want to protect my privacy. And um, if if you look at the, the contract uh, that you signed in order to get an account with Facebook, uh, you know, there are some significant... Uh, uh, there's some significant issues with that uh, in that you're, you know, you're giving your pictures away and Facebook can use them as they wish and they own the information and... Uh, yeah, I was wondering about that. Do I lose copyright when I put things up there? Do they, do they, are they able to utilize that as copyright? I don't know if they're able to utilize that as copyright, but they're certainly able to behave uh, with it as they wish. Like when they repost it and things like that, they, they you know you're not able to charge them for yeah. use of your information. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think I do agree though. There is a there is a sense of um, Big Brother, if you will, with it, right? Uh, well, yeah, but it's it's also kind of just like you're using um, uh, you're using my room, but whatever you leave in my room is mine to keep, kind of thing. It's uh, mm. it's almost. Like a trade, you know, uh, beyond, you know, allowing yourself to be advertised to or whatever. That's true. That's true. Uh, I think we're, we've reached about 30 minutes. So I think it might be opportune for us to take a small break. Sure. And I, then when we come back, I'm we can exhausted. go. What's that? I know I'm exhausted. Well, we've been working very hard. I, I honestly think that um, we should get paid more. Yeah, we should. More, more than nothing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Feel free at any time to donate. I'm actually going to put, put a little thing here. Uh, you can email us questions, comments, concerns, or or passionate uh, passionate uh, connections that you're longing for. You can send any of that to wewin at timeconsultinginc.com. And let's see here. I've got another another little thing I'll throw up here. Uh, you can search for the podcast "We Win with T Win," uh, or, or uh, that's that's the name of the show. We win with T Win. This one's called "Interviews with Success," and uh, there's also a newsletter that you can subscribe to. Uh, TimeConsultingInc.com/slash/newsletter is also there. So, uh, just a few little fun trinkets. But I think we're going to take a small break and uh, give you a chance to to you know rest decompress and i'm going to do the same and i think i'm going to throw a little bit of that video kill the radio star on as a as a little bit of a break are you still there tolly i am i i was i was beginning my break already oh wow you're way ahead okay so we're going to be right back i'm going to throw this on and i will commence speaking and then you'll know we've resumed okay great all right 